Hi guys, welcome to another summer of a good video today. Today I'm going to take you guys through uh, uh, basically the uh, sexual system world area and I'm specifically going to focus on, on the memory structures. Uh, I, later on I'm, I'm going to have a, a, a uh, another uh, session on the memory the, uh, background processes. Remember I told you guys uh, last time what basically uh, the way that oh, the way that SGA is configured is you have to have a um, you have to have a uh, memory structure in back in the background process for you to have an instance. So, uh, for example, in this diagram that I that I have on here, uh, again these are the memory sh the memory structures that you have in Oracle. The database uh, buffer cache, the reading log buffer, and the shuffle. So this is SGA, uh, and w and the SGA within the SGA you have you have all these memory structures, and then. Again, you have yourself on the outside of the background processes, and then once you have these two uh, connected uh, or synchronized, I mean, you have um, you have you create you create you def you then created you then are able to create an instance. So uh, basically, in terms of the um, in terms of the database buffer cache, which is the the one the, the cache that you that you come up that you that uh, that you know, and I'm not sure how how fair the common people refer to it but it's a very um it's basically the reason why uh, most people just like uh, aware of it is because it's the that it's the it's a buffer cache that you know well basically I think about it this way so um when you have an, when you have a transaction issued uh, from you know an application right onto the database what happens is that um the buffer cache is actually it you have this you have a process called the database writer uh, what what and what it does is it basically goes to the data file looks at the data and then brings back to the buffer cache and then stores it there. So that's why I uh, you know like um in, in the buffer cache is really, is really important because that's what that's where you store your data for uh, recording purposes. Um and then in terms of the buffer cache you have um this is in most environments this is the only um setting that you have. Uh the default the default pool like um you know you can also configure for a key pool recycle pool so in terms of the default pool it basically is the as you can see it's the, it's the biggest one on here so uh, this is where all of your data um, is stored um, you know different different stages and I'm gonna go into those uh, in a little bit and then the key pool basically is sort of like um, you know it's sort of uh, it's a it's a um, and so sort of like it what it does is it has the same function as the default pool but the thing is um, what it, what it actually keeps um, 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 data blocks that have been stored uh, for a really long time that have sort of like aged out um, of the default pool. So uh, this is just for longer, uh, longer um, retention of your um, of your your blocks, your database blocks. And then here at the bottom you have the, re the recycle pool. Uh, basically, uh, so this is uh, again, where this is a uh, basically sort of like. The opposite of um, the default pool, where basically this is only for data that's used infrequently. So, um, you know, mo in most environments, I told you guys, you only have to worry about the default pool. But if you'd like, you can also configure a key pool and also you can configure the, recy the recycle pool. So, in terms of the database buffer cache, the task basically uh, what it does is it stores, as I told you guys, it stores the uh, copies of the data blocks right from the data files. Uh, Again, um, so basically, every time you issue a query, the, the database writer process goes into um, Bluetooth data file, uh, reads the file, and then comes back to the uh, the, da the, the, um, the database buffer and then stores that information there. So then you you, you only have to query it and it's going to end. Uh, so, so basically, what it does is it reduces the amount of um, I/O operation that takes place in the database. Uh, again, uh, just to get into the I/O, um, you know, uh, basically this is more about optimization, right? So again, this is for you know VMR operations or um, you know if you have a update or uh, insert. So what happens is that um, basically it makes that it makes that process it makes it makes um, you 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 are issuing these statements less um, less um, less um, sort of like heavy. On the on on your on your Oracle software, so like it doesn't take a, it doesn't it doesn't take up as many resources because you have um, because of the database buffer uh, cache, uh, and also uh, basically what it does is uh, it manages the LRU algorithm, which is basically the least recently used um, algorithm. So uh, it's the the database um, buffer the database buffer uh, memory error in database buffer that's 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 actually used. 
So, uh, so you can be, you go back and forth between like what's most useful, what's what's less use, and then so like allocate enough space based on uh, based on uh, those two um, those two those two processes. And then these are the key parameters for um, for the, the three pools that I, that I um, that I showed you guys earlier. The first one is the DB uh, cache size. Uh, basically, um, that's that's the one that refers to the default pool. All you have to do is uh, set that within your um, Within your within your parameter file, and then you know that's going to be um, your configuration for the default pool. And then you can, this is the one for the keep the keep pool, and this is the one for the uh, recycle cache uh, pool. And also, as I told you guys already, this is the, the background process that I use uh, in terms of the database buffer cache is a database writer, and it's also referred to as DBWR. Um, and then it's going to have it's going to most of the time it's going to have an end at the end, which is which stands for the number. Uh, of that other database writer, and you can have multiple database writers uh, within uh, within your Oracle um, environment. And then the um, and also in terms of database writer, you have different states. Um, so basically, um, uh, the, the database buffer you have, you have different you have different states. So think of it as in um, so if if it if a database if a database buffer block has never been has never been used, it's going to be referred to as, as unused. Um, and basically, you know, like if a data if if a uh, if a data if, if a database writer's process has to go to data file, you know, make a reading and then come store that, that data into the into the database buffer, then it's gonna rely on on this state. Uh, it's gonna rely for the, on the block being the state uh, in the end use state, so that'll be easy easy for that uh, the process to uh, to get your data and store it. And also, you have the clean state uh, where basically the data uh, used to have. Um, we used to have um, um, data that was not that was not uh, that that was not like it. What okay? So in terms of clean, so what happens is that you would have a database writer go to the data file, read the data, read the data file, bring bring uh, come back and store the um, the information from the data file into the database buffer, and then so basically what it, what it, the thing is when you have a clean a clean um, a clean um, database buffer um, basically. It, it's gonna it's gonna be, it's referring to uh, basically a database writer having to go back and you know, like uh, and then and then and then um and then that 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 data that database buffer having like um that database buffer not having the data that it had before so basically it's not like think it's 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 a cycle so basically you have the the database uh, the database writer is constantly constantly uh, reading uh, data files so. Whenever it, whenever it reads a uh, data file, stores that data, and eventually that data becomes too old and it's no longer there. That's when the data file, the, the database buffer that you refer to as clean. Uh, again, this is uh, if you go back to uh, the diagram that I showed you guys earlier. Uh, these different blocks. Uh, these are the clean blocks, and these are the these are the blocks that are that are um, that are um, currently being used. Um, so you have you have unused, you have clean, which is the the clean one that I just showed you guys, and then you have the dirty one. Uh, basically, um, so uh, in terms of the dirty one, that's the that's the uh, that's the one where basically the database buffer has not been has not has not cleared out the data in the data in that has not cleared it cleared or written the data onto the disk. So basically, um, so the way that it works is I'm just gonna be very like very uh, simple about this. So you have uh, when you issue a query. Database, but the database writer goes to the data file, reads the data, and then brings it back, brings that information back to the database buffer. So when, when let's say you were the first person to issue that query, right? Uh, what's gonna happen is that if the next, when the next person issue that query, the database writer is just gonna look into that database buffer to get that data, since you already, you know, it's a similar query, and then just bring back that information. And then what happens after that is the data, that the database buffer information, the database buffer is actually written to disk. Is written to, uh, to some sort of a it's like a, 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 a like a storage um, facility uh, or a, a, a utility actually. So uh, and then the, the process of that data being written to uh, uh, basically like you know a, a different a, a different utility is actually called a checkpoint. And I'm gonna get into that later on. So uh, that's pretty much the database buffer um, on the database writer process. Um, the, the, the database writer um, you know writing you know data taking data back and forth in between database buffer the data the database the data file and the um 
and the um and the the, the, the storage uh, utility. And then next one is a redo log buffer. So the uh, best way to think about a redo log buffer is sort of like um. So when you when you have a uh, when you issue a query when you issue a transaction, uh, what happens is that um, let's say um, you know, the, you know what what happens is that so the the data the database um, the data the, the the okay the the log the log router right. So the database buffer takes um, the data the database buffer and the and the redo log the redo log um, the redo log buffer so like. So the the information that comes that comes from the database buffer goes into the goes into the uh, the redo log the, into the redo log buffer and then the redo log buffer has a process that invites the uh, the information from the redo log buffer into the online redo log, uh, which is which is a physical which is a physical um, uh, file that you have on your system, uh, and that's where that's where you um, basically those trans transactions are stored. So. Um, uh, the reason why you have this it's called redo is let's say you uh, basically you um, you experience some sort of system failure. Uh, what you, what's going to happen is that you're going to have yourself a redo log uh, that's full and that you can use to bring your database back to its consistent state. Um, so basically, that's the purpose of, purpose of a redo log buffer. So it's just again, as you guys can see, it's just a um, it's, it has this circular motion where basically it's constantly. It's constantly uh, it has it has this process log writer process is constantly going to the online redo log, and then basically what happens is that uh, you typically have three redo logs one two and three right. So basically what happens is that the information that's in here is either gonna get lost or it's gonna be written to the uh, archive the archive um, log files. So only with these three files they they're actually gonna like take, keep being reused, and uh, so it's just a matter of like what you configure uh, for the database to do after these. These um these video logs are uh, completely filled up, um, and then the, the the background process that you use here is uh is the uh, is the log writer, and okay, okay, as you guys can see, basically you just reapply the transaction uh, to data files uh to recover some lost data. So uh, if you experience a system failure, that's one you gonna you definitely gonna need to have. You definitely gonna need to have uh, the video logs available. What information for the video logs available. And also the last thing, the last memory structure that you have is the shell call. So basically what it does is it stores the the uh PL SQL the SQL and the PL PL SQL code. Um so as you guys can see, uh, basically within the shell pool you have a library cache, the dictionary cache, uh school server cache, and you have some other cache and uh, and some and some other pools. And then, uh, so this is very important in terms of the uh, shared server uh, architecture. Uh, basically, um, uh, when you have a shared server, server architecture, you, you have a private SQL area. Um, and the reason why it's important is because of this. So basically, um, this is where, this is not what it looks like. What a typical um, a typical um, transaction, a typical um, connection uh, looks like. So here you have a client process at the bottom, and you have a query that's being that's being issued. And then and you have a server process. So basically, what it, what the server process is doing is taking all of this information. You know the PGA. Um, again, this is the PGA includes the session memory, private SQL area, and the SQL work area. And basically takes it over to the SGA. Um, takes it over to the library cache, and then that's where you have the uh, that's where you have the um, like your query your query just being uh, being stored. So. Um, Again, this is important because you know, like if you have a shared again, uh, I know I'm, as I've mentioned this already. If you have a shared a shared environment, what you really want to have is you want to know that um, uh, basically all of your all of your queries is being like is being stored independently uh, within the SGA. So um, this is just uh, very important in terms of the um, in terms of a sh in terms of a uh, you know just transactional trans transactional. Um, the transactional um, processes within Oracle, um, and also this is these are just um, like the different, the different um, I would call them like the different components of the shell pool. Uh, basically, you just have uh, the, dis the, the, the dictionary cache, uh, as I showed you guys already. The dictionary ca cache. Uh, basically, um, think of it as in like eventually. Even I'm gonna I'm gonna have a video on this, but. Uh, eventually, it's just like it's, it's just like um, 
it's objects that um, sort of you know that belong to uh, it's information about objects that belong to like specific users uh, within it, who are part of who are, uh, who's within the database and then uh, again the library cache um, again is basically stores the uh, SQL and PL SQL and then you have the uh, result cache um, basically um, uh, stores the result of queries and query uh, fragments some of these are just like you would never have to um, like know like you know we have to be like fully aware of them but they're just like uh, good to know about um, the ones that actually stand out are let's say something like a um, like maybe let's say a large pool um, basically it's just for you know uh, memory allocation right for basically uh, you know mem like a like it's an additional memory area where basically uh, if the share pool is not big enough uh, or it's not or if the if the if the if the memory area is too large or inappropriate for the share pool that then yeah then you have that uh, that memory area just go just go in and be part of the of the large pool um, component and um, and I also I think the reserve pool is also important uh, because it's basically what it does is allow it allow for you to um, basically just allocate um, a contiguous um, chunks of memory so uh, and then again so what it does is it takes away fragmentation um, so that's also really important and then that is it um, thanks a lot for watching and uh, next time I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have the video on uh, background processes and uh, uh, thanks a lot for watching again I hope to see you guys next time